vapor permeance, permeability, vapor barriers, vapor retarders, and perm ratings. It's all pretty confusing, isn't it? In this video, we're going to look at the science of vapor movement, the perm rating system, and the ratings of specific building materials. The exterior walls of a building are responsible for controlling four main differences between the conditioned indoor and the unconditioned outdoor environments. The first and most important is water, which is controlled with cladding or siding, windows, doors, flashing and a water-resistive barrier like Tyvek and Zip system. The second is air, which is controlled with plywood or OSP sheathing, some types of insulation, plastic sheets, cork and tape, and fluid applied weather resistive barriers. The third is temperature, which is controlled with insulation like fiberglass, rock wool, spray foam, denim, hemp wool, and cellulose. The fourth is water vapor, which is controlled by the arrangement of many material layers. It's pretty obvious that controlling water, vapor, and temperature is important, but why is vapor such a big deal? Well, older homes were built differently. They have high air leakage, high ventilation rates, and lower relative humidity levels. Any water vapor in the exterior walls could easily evaporate either to the interior or to the exterior. Nowadays, we're trying to build airtight homes with smaller air exchanges and no air leakages. We now use continuous spray foam insulation and inoperable windows. While this makes homes more efficient, they also lead to high relative humidity levels inside homes which can cause mold and mildew to grow in your walls. That's why controlling vapor is so important. We have to invent new methods and materials to prevent condensation because our construction techniques have changed. There are a couple of terms we need to clarify before moving on. Relative humidity is one of them. It is the percentage of water in the air relative to the maximum the air can hold at a given temperature. The relative humidity changes when the air temperature changes because warmer air can typically hold more water vapor than cooler air. Ideally, the relative humidity inside your home should be between 30 and 50 percent. Anything higher can lead to rot, mold and structural damage. Dew point is another term in this discussion on vapor movement. It is the temperature at which water vapor condenses into liquid. If warm air comes in contact with the cool surface, the molecules slow down and the gaseous vapor turns into liquid water droplets. This is the same phenomenon that causes water droplets to form on a glass of cold water kept outside on a warm day. You don't want that condensation to happen inside your walls. You want to place a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder at a certain part of your wall before the warm air has a chance to cool down and condense. Vapor diffusion is the movement of water vapor molecules through porous materials. To achieve an equilibrium, water vapor typically moves from the side with high vapor pressure or warm air to the side with low vapor pressure or cold air. In cold climates, water vapor in the warm interior air is driven to the cooler exterior. In hot climates, water vapor in the warm exterior air is driven to the cooler interior. To measure the ability of a material to let water vapor pass through, we came up with a rating system called perm rating. In the US, a permeance or perm rating of 1.0 means that in one hour, when the vapor pressure difference between the cold side and the warm side of a material is one inch of mercury, one grain of water vapor will pass through one square foot of the material. One grain of water is equal to one seven thousandth of a pound. An inch of mercury is a measure for vapor pressure. In the metric system, a perm rating of 1.0 means that in one day, when the vapor pressure difference between the cold side and the warm side of a material is one millimeter of mercury, one gram of water vapor will pass through one square meter of the material. One metric perm is equal to approximately 1.5 US perms. Now let's look at the US perm ratings of the most common building materials. The lower the number, the less likely it is to allow water vapor through. The first classification includes materials with the perm rating of 0.1 or less. They are considered vapor impermeable or a vapor barrier. They barely allow any vapor through. This includes glass, 1 mil aluminum foil, cork flooring, rubber flooring, 6 mil polyethylene, sheet metal, and foil-faced polyiso. 
The second classification includes materials with 0.1 to 1.0 perms. They are considered semi-permeable to water vapor. This includes vapor retardant paint, oil-based paint, asphalt coated paper, foil faced fiberglass, 2 inches of closed cell spray foam, 1 inch of XPS, and craft paper insulation. The third classification includes materials with 1 to 10 perms. They are considered semi-permeable to water vapor. This includes 3 inches of EPS insulation, OSP, tar paper, 2 inches of MDF, fluid applied vapor retarders, latex paint, and plywood sheathing. The last group of materials have a perm rating of over 10. They are considered vapor permeable. They include wood siding, zip coating, plaster and metal lath, rock wool, cellulose insulation, brick, and Tyvek. Rock wool has a very helpful graphic comparing the vapor permeance of various types of exterior insulation. The chart shows us that XPS is the least vapor permeable and cellulose is the most vapor permeable. It also shows us that vapor permeance decreases as the thickness of insulation increases, which makes sense. It's more difficult for water vapor to travel through thicker insulation materials. I'll link this chart in the description below. Remember that all the values we just discussed are permeance or the moisture transmission rate of materials. Permeability is the permeance multiplied by the thickness of the material. I was hesitant to include actual ratings of each building material because every website, research journal, and study provides different numbers. The science of vapor movement is still fairly new, so building scientists seem to come up with different hypotheses every year. I'm going to release another video tomorrow explaining the location of vapor barriers or vapor retarders in different climates and different wall assemblies like brick, CMU, and stucco walls. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm also going to provide a link to my Patreon page. If you can support me on that, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See ya.